What's up y'all, this is Nick with From the Ground Up DIY and today I'm going to show you how to build a brick smoker. So the idea to make the brick smoker came from my parents because my mom, she likes to barbecue a lot and my dad, he used to work at a brickyard and we had a whole bunch of brick that we collected over the years. And when they mentioned this idea to me, this is when I first started getting into DIY projects. And I knew for this project, I was going to have to lay brick. And this was my first time doing so. So I thought it was going to be an interesting project. So I decided to go in head first and see what I could do. The brick smoker consists of three major parts. And the first part is the fire pit side, which is to the left. And this is where all your firewood is going to go. And then to the right, we have your food storage side. And this is where you're going to place all your food. And then there's a pipe in the middle, which connects the fire pit side and the food store side. And the way that the smoker works is that first you put your firewood in the fire pit side. And once your firewood heats up, all the smoke and heat travel to the food store side to where it smokes your food. This whole project took me about three months to do. And this is because I have a full time career. So back in the summer when I was working on this, when I would go for work, I'll work on the smoker for about an hour or two. And then on the weekends, that's when I would hit it hard. I work most of the day Saturday and most of the day Sunday on the smoker. And it took me a while to get past the learning curve when it came to laying brick. And I also took a lot of time planning out how I was gonna do everything from building the doors to figuring out what I was gonna do for the roof, for the fire pit side and the food store side. And also how I was gonna control the air circulation throughout the smoker. So I spent a lot of time planning and thinking out as well. But if you know what you're doing and know how to lay brick, it should take you probably just a few weeks. So to start this project off, I started by doing an initial layout of my foundation. I used wooden stakes and string to figure out how big I wanted my concrete slab to be. And I also laid some brick out just to get a feel for everything, how I wanted everything to look. After doing all my needed adjustments, I decided to make my concrete slab seven feet long, three feet wide, and with a four inch depth. And the purpose of the concrete slab is to have a flat level surface for the smoker to be on. And also it'll support the weight of the smoker as well. So I did the hole to about seven to eight inches down, and then I used my level to make sure that everything was flat before I made my wood form. And to make my wood form, I used two inch by six inch lumber. And once I had everything in place, I started pouring the concrete for the slab. I wasn't able to get any videos of me pouring the concrete, but for this part, I recommend that you get somebody to help you out because one person can mix the concrete and pour it into the hole, while the other person uses a trial to smooth it out. I used about 20 bags of concrete to make the concrete slab and each bag weighed 50 pounds and to figure out how many bags you need there's calculators online and all you gotta do is just put in the dimensions of your slab and it'll tell you how many bags of concrete you need. After I got done pouring the slab I let it dry for about two to three days and then I started the process of laying the brick and to lay the brick you need to know how to make mortar first so I'm gonna show you how to do that. For those of you who don't know what mortar is, it's the workable paste that goes in between the brick to bind them together, and it's made of masonry, cement, and sand. For my brick laying, I decided to use Lehigh Type in masonry cement, and then I used Quickcrete All Purpose Sand. I started off by pouring a small amount of masonry cement into my mixing tub, which you can get from your local home improvement store. And then I added some sand into my mixing tub as well. And when you do this, you want to make sure that you use a two to one ratio. And this means that for whatever amount of masonry cement that you use, you want to use as twice as much sand. And once I had this in my mixing tub, I added some water to the mix and then I used my trowel to mix everything together. After that, I added some quick crease cement color to my mix, and this is optional. The only thing that it does is change the color of the mortar, because usually it's a grayish kind of color, and I wanted something different, so I decided to use this. I continued to mix everything together, and I also added a little bit more water and cement to my mix. And both of these kind of vary. It's kind of, you kind of got to play around with it, because sometimes when I mix my mortar, I have too much water in it, it's too watery, so I add some cement to it to thicken it up. But then sometimes I have too much cement to where it's kind of hard to work with, so I gotta add a little bit more water. So it's just one of those things you just gotta play around with. But this is the consistency you should get once you're done. 
Now that the mortar is complete, I began to start laying the bricks. To start, I scooped up some mortar with my trowel and placed it on this plastic platform that I have. And I recommend that you get something like this so that you're able to mix your mortar on. I made sure that I mixed my mortar really well before applying it to the brick. And this is just to make sure I don't have any lumps of sand or cement still left in my mortar. So you want to make sure that you mix it really well so that it has a smooth look to it. Once I finished this, I started by placing some mortar on the side of my brick first. And when I did this, I made sure that I flattened the mortar out and then I scraped any that was hanging on the sides. And when you're doing this, you want to make sure that you keep the fitness of the mortar to about half an inch. I then got some mortar and placed it on the concrete slab. And when you do this, you want to make sure that you flatten the mortar out so that when you place the brick, it's completely covered with mortar. And when you place the brick, you want to make sure that the side you put mortar on attaches to the existing brick that you already placed. And what I do is that I'll get my trowel and I'll tap on the brick a little bit just to tap it down to make sure it's in place. And I also to make sure that it's even with the other brick. And then after that, you want to grab your level just to make sure that everything is even and level and you don't want any slants or anything. And this is very important because when you start the next row, it's going to affect you then because when you place the, the brick on the next row in that place where you left it slanted, that brick going to be kind of slanted and you got to add and take off mortar and that could be a little bit of a hassle. So make sure that you get it right the first time and make sure that everything is even and flat. I repeated this process for all the brick that I laid. One thing that you want to remember is that when you're coming up with the dimensions for the smoker, you want to make sure that you account for the mortar that's in between the bricks. And this is one thing that I forgot to do. And by me forgetting to do this, my fireplace side and my food store side ended up kind of being too close. And as you'll see later in the video, but make sure that you account for the mortar that's in between the bricks when you're doing your dimensions. While laying the bricks, I also went back and used a brick joiner to go back over my joints to make sure that they were nice and smooth. You want to make sure that you're doing this as you go along because as the mortar dries, it gets harder for you to smooth out the joints. So make sure that you have your joiner handy with you so that you can smooth the joints right after you place the brick down. I went ahead and laid all the foundational brick and then I decided that I was going to lay all the brick for the fire pit side first and then once I'm done with that, I'm going to go back to the food store side and then lay all of those brick. On the second row of the fire pit side, you can see that I have three holes on the side and on the back and these are going to be used as my air circulation vents. And the way that these vents work is that the ones here on the fire pit side, these are the intake vents and the purpose of these are to pull oxygen in to the fire pit side and to help control the temperature throughout the smoker. And I'm also going to have another vent and it's going to be three holes and it's going to be at the top of the food store side and this is going to be the outtake vent. And the purpose of this vent is to get the bad gases out of the smoker and it's also to help pull oxygen in through the intake vent which will create a draft throughout the smoker. And my plan is to talk about air circulation in part two of this video. So now I'm going to show you how to make the air circulation vents. For this, you're going to need a hammer and a brick chisel. And basically what you're going to do is just cut the ends off of a brick, off both ends. And I went down about an inch and a half. And what you want to do is just make a mark wherever you want to cut the brick and make it on all four sides of the brick. And then with your brick chisel, you want to grab your hammer and just do a few taps on each side until it breaks, as you can see here. And I used two bricks and I cut the two ends off of one brick and then I got another brick, cut that one in and that's how I got my three holes for my air circulation vent. I laid the air circulation brick like I laid all the other brick. You want to make sure that everything is leveled and flat. And when laying these bricks, since they don't have the same width as your full bricks, you want to make sure that these bricks are flush with the edge of the rest of your brick and make sure that everything is just leveled and in place. After that, I went ahead and installed the pipe that's going to connect the fire pit side to the food store side. I started by laying mortar underneath the pipe so that it can bind with the brick. And once I got done with that, I went ahead and laid brick around the pipe on the fire pit side. 
I also laid brick on each side of the pipe that was on the food store side and I did this so that the pipe could already be set in place and so that nothing could hit up against it causing it to move and when you're laying these brick you want to make sure that they're level with the top of the pipe so that when you start your next layer everything could be flat and level. I got this metal pipe from my local home improvement store and it's about one and a half feet to about two feet and as you can see here I got a large amount of the pipe hanging over on my food store side but I'm gonna cut this so that it can be flush with the brick later on in the video. I continue to lay brick on the fire pit side until I got to my desired height of about two feet and when you're laying the brick you want to make sure that you alternate bricks on each row so on one row I'll start with a full brick and go all the way around and then on the next row, I'll start with half a brick and go all the way around. And you wanna do this so that your joint lines all don't look the same, that they alternate and look different from each other. And this is the finished brick laying of the fire pit side. Next, I used a handsaw to cut the pipe that was hanging over on the food store side and I tried to make the cut as close to the brick as possible. After that, I started to lay brick on the food store side and when I got to the row that was above the pipe, I decided not to place any brick on top of the pipe and this was because that when I tried to, those brick was really unlevel from all the other brick. So to fix this, I just laid a brick on each side of the pipe and I just filled that space in with mortar. I continued to lay brick until I got to about the sixth row and this is where I decided that I was going to do my grill rack setup. I got innovative when it came to this setup. I decided to place six brick horizontal and let half of each brick rest inside the smoker and the purpose of this is so that the corners of each of the bricks can hold the racks. I cut the corners of all six brick and I made sure that the cut corners were on the inside of the smoker and I made sure that the other side was flush with the edge of the existing brick. While laying these six brick, the problem that I ran to was that the brick were beginning to slant and this is because the brick are horizontal instead of vertical and to fix this I decided to use some old center blocks that I had laying around and after every time I would lay a brick I'll place a center block on top to prevent the brick from slanting and this is what the finished product looks like. I decided to do this grill rack setup again when I got to the 12th row and you can really do this setup on any row that you want to. It's really just a personal preference. I just decided to do mine on the sixth row and the 12th row just to make sure that it all has good spacing between each other. And this is what it looked like finish. I continued to lay brick until I got to about the 18th row and this is where I placed my last air circulation vent. I laid one more row of brick after finishing this row and that wraps up the brick laying on the food store side. I hope you all enjoyed part one of the video and this part I really just wanted to show y'all how I laid the brick down for the smoker. In part two of this video I'm going to show y'all how I laid a few more brick to get them ready for the doors and I'm also going to show you how I made the doors for the smoker and how I installed them and I'm also going to show you how I made concrete slabs for the roof of the smoker for both sides the fireplace side and the food store side and I'm also going to talk more about air circulation and really just show y'all how the smoker works and then I'm also going to tell y'all about some modifications I plan on making in the future but until then peace many blessings and I'll catch y'all next time.